France against Japan, folks. 20 points to 15. France complete their series with a 2-0 win. Uh, so they can go back home to France. Pretty happy that they've put in a good shift. Not quite as clinical as last week. Um, some improvements, certainly from the Japanese. The French maybe won't be that happy, but they'll certainly be happy they got a win. Um, sometimes it's one of those ones where you get a win where you don't play your best, that you know you're a pretty good team. We'll go through some key events and stats. And you guys can let me know your thoughts. The French, kind of like last week, started really well. Lebel gets a try out in that left wing, similar to what Pinot did last week. Last week it was a scrum, this week it was a maul. Spin the ball wide, and it's a bit too easy, seemingly, for the French to get that 7-0 lead. But that being said, Yamanaka's try hits back pretty much immediately for the Japanese. Really beautiful try, like draw and pass. Uh, confident guys to take the contact and then get the ball away. Offloads, like really, really thing of beauty try. Uh, for the Japanese, they do miss the conversion, but they uh, get back within two points of the French. And then the game, I would say, gets a wee bit messy. There's a few too many knock-ons. Japan's attack looks more threatening than it did last week when the French were largely able to kind of keep that high-tempo passing game pretty quiet. And the French kicks were sometimes a little bit too deep. Like at the start of the game, like they, their build-up to their first try was all about their kind of kick chase and putting pressure on the Japanese guys in the backfield. That kind of goes off the boil a bit. Um, but finally... Towards the end of the first half, we see something stick, and it is Yamanaka who finishes it again. It's another really beautiful try, offloads, and um, uh, just read great, great hands. Michael Leach with a good carry in that one. I think it was Nakano that set up the first one with a beautiful offload, and then uh, Leach and others who build up to the second one. So both the Japanese tries were really quite beautiful. So um, the Japanese guys take a, uh, a nice lead into the uh into the sheds as they go in they've had more run meters 320 to 108 they've had more possession 55 percent the french have missed a few tackles and their tackling percentage in the 70s is way lower than what we're kind of used to seeing from them second half um, the french get a settler with a penalty to kind of cool things down a bit and they do start turning the screws it's not perfect by any means and they get turned over a lot a lot they just can't break the japanese down for large periods I mean, um, the Japanese kick it out of the full at one point, and then Wanga, the uh, the big lock, gets a line out of steel to kind of get them out of jail. And that's the continued phases thing. Like, the, the Japanese would defend a bunch of phases from the French attack. Gunter would win a, uh, a breakdown penalty. France would turn the screws. Eventually, the Japanese defense would hold on one way or another. Um, finally, the French opted for another three after seeming to kind of want to chase the five. Um, they had to go for the three to make it 13-15. So they're back within a score. Um, Makalu at one point picks up a bouncing ball. Looks like he might be going to go over, but he gets isolated. And then the Japanese win another turnover. So it is really just about wave after wave of French attack. And then somehow the Japanese defense keeping them out, at least stopping them from scoring tries. And um, unfortunately for the Japanese, but I mean, maybe fortunately for the French, the Japanese line out has a really kind of purple patch where they, they can't win their own line out ball. They end up missing about four line outs in this game. So um, when they look to have exited, then they lose their own line out. And it's another chance for the French guys to attack. So that's certainly an area that um, the uh, Japanese coaching staff will look back at. I put a note, like how many turnovers can Japan make to hold on? How many are they going to have to make? Gunter won another one. But then they like muck the quick tap off because they didn't want to go for line outs. Because their lineup was struggling so bad, they tried to tap it and then just knocked it on from the tap. Like, it's really head and hand stuff if you're a coach. Remember, very hot weather, very humid, very slippery ball. Guys having to stop for water breaks every kind of 10 minutes. Like, it's pretty brutal stuff. And uh, some of that showed in the handling, but that mucked up tap was uh, pretty bad. Um, finally, the French, through Kuyu, managed to, to score a try. Um, you know, he kind of backed himself. I've, I'm told he's a pretty... Uh, bold young kind of attacking player and we saw that where he kind of gets shown a bit too much space and uh, it really did have to come it, it was coming for a long time and finally uh, they got it so 20 points to 15 the French go in front at last and now that Japan are behind they've been in their own half pretty much the entire second half they finally get down the French end they're throwing a few uh, waves of their own at the French defense they get penalties they do back their line out despite the fact that it's been poor and they manage to win the line out ball Tatafu goes over to even it up they put the score on the board 20 points apiece but the TMO checks that he's knocked it on over the line Oh, uh, pretty close. Um, but yeah, it was a clear drop. There was definite separation. Um, 76 minutes, the Japanese actually managed to win a scrum penalty, even though they looked like they were under the pump. 
Um, so they get another shot. They win the lineout, but they knock it on. 79 minutes, Cornelson, they're attacking again, and he just knocks it on clean. It's just like, man, that's just the story of the Japanese day. They, they defended for so long. They finally got cracked by the French attack. The French attack is pretty brutal, but um, yeah, it was a crazy, crazy game, this one. I mean, a lot of errors. Both sides will be a little bit frustrated with that, but um, when it goes down to being a five point difference at the end that usually makes for an exciting one for us neutrals who don't know which way it's going to go the japanese finished with more run meters 575 to 336 but turnovers conceded 22 is absolutely diabolical you can't concede 22 turnovers man the french with 13 but i mean they did offload it nine times to two so the japanese were just honestly chucking the ball around quite a lot when it worked twice it really worked but when it didn't work it would kind of go to custard both sides missed a few too many tackles um kicks from hand is actually relatively high the french have a few more to keep that kind of territory thing on their side 35 29 the japanese line outs at 75 percent which means one in four was ending up in french hands probably not good enough in a test match the um the french line out in comparison 88 percent pretty pretty reliable but there you go folks unfortunately espn didn't have their match stats up for this one so i don't know the individual player stats but um yeah jelly bear had to do a bit of goal kicking at the end um and uh yes yeah, some pretty sweet moves like gunter with the turnovers like i mentioned kuyu to back himself was pretty good labelle had a couple of good runs uh max spring clocked up some run meters but still uh, not a complete performance from him it's his first game so we'll look forward to his advancing french career but there you go 20 points to 15 french win and um yeah pretty pretty crazy game Speaking of crazy games, time to go back and finish the All Blacks against Ireland game because if you're not watching it, it's really intense uh, and I won't spoil it, but you should watch it. You guys take care. I will talk to you guys again soon. See you later.